Go. Chris, uh, 2000, uh, I just don't think you can uh, ask for anything better than the way this one uh, ended up being. Uh, what a special group it was for you guys. You know, play 15 games and uh, be in a position. I mean, yeah, it really, it really was. We had a uh, at the we had a quarterback move in during the summer that was pretty good. And uh, ironically, the kid that he beat out went to wide receiver and ended up winning the SQ award that year. Justin Smith, who was a great student and a great player, but Eric was kind of special. He had. Uh, I think there's four things that are important with uh, quarterbacks. I think uh, you got accuracy, quick release, quick decisions, able to move in the pocket and scramble. And I think the two most important, I mean, actually Eric could do it all, but he was very, very accurate. I mean, I can't think of a bad pass he threw all year. I mean, he, he would throw it away when he had to, and others he would put in a position where only our, def our only our receiver had a chance for it. It looked like it was, you know, away, but I mean, he threw it away from the defender. Uh, he was, uh, he was uh, pretty good and he gave us, uh, he gave us a, uh, a, a dimension that, uh, you know, he was uh, quick on his feet and just, uh, so that was, that was a big thing. And the second thing, we lost uh, Ian Smith, one of our running backs, in the course of the year. But he came back and played to starting in the Noblesville game, and uh, that was uh, that was kind of interesting. I'd tell you, <laughs> uh, there was a stretch in there from week three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight straight games where there was a shutout. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, <laughs> yeah, it really is. It's a, uh, uh, the, the thing is, uh, the NIC was always, uh, it, was, it was always physical league. If you wouldn't hit in the NIC, you'd get laughed out of the, out of the area. So you had to be a, a physical team. But people fought, <clears throat> and they were correct. I mean, first of all, <laughs> Penn's like double the size of anybody else in our league. So you figure, honestly, we ought to win most games. Mm -hmm. But uh, to toss shutouts is, uh, is, is, is something uh, pretty special. And the, the thing about our schedule, and I've told you this before, you can put any spin on the schedule you want to. I remember in uh, 92, 93, 94, we didn't get out of the sectional, lost out Snyder, it was a lot different there. We went east, we played down to Fort Wayne. And people would say, you know, the reason you guys didn't win the sectional, you, you got an easy schedule. I mean, you're not prepared for Santa Snyder. Then we won the then we not only won the state, we won the state, 95, 96, 97. People say, well, you know what? Your schedule. You can get your backups, all kind of experience. If a kid is uh, has to sit out a game, he sits out. You don't have to try to play him to win it. He says, your schedule really works in your favor. So when you, when you win the state, it's because of your schedule. When you lose a sectional, it's because of your schedule. So I don't know what it is. But as I said, uh, the NIC, uh, you, I mean, you, it's a physical league, and uh, I just I wish that uh, they would do a little bit to get, you know, South Bend football back on the ball again. You know, it's I don't know what they can do, but uh, I, I, I feel bad. Because uh, I remember one year we played uh, Adams, this size 78. I mean, we were like 8 0, and they were 0 and 8. And we beat them 14 to 7, and very happy to do so. I mean, that's the way it used to be. I look back at the old schedules, or old results, and in the, in the 70s, I mean, there's a lot of 20 to 13 games. A big win was 20 to 7. Back, and uh, mm. and it's, it's kind of, uh, I know Penn. Penn program is just like they get bigger numbers, bigger, uh, and and just a, a very 
it, it starts at the top and works its way down. It doesn't start at the bottom. And our superintendents have wanted good sports. They're not afraid to... I remember uh, how you would compare Jerry Thacker and Dean Spiker. They both, they both said, if we're going to offer a program for kids, it's going to be the best possible program it can be. I don't care if it's quiz bowl. I don't care if it's math class. I don't care if it's football. I don't care if it's choir. If we're going to offer it, we're going to make it the best we can. And I don't think a lot of superintendents feel that way or would have the uh, fortitude to say that it was important to win football games. I mean, uh, you know who would come out of the woodwork. You're here to educate the kids, education is number one. Yeah, it is number one. But I know when I, when I had two boys that played football, if I was going to move, I'd want a good academic school that would be very, very important for me to get them in a good football program too. And there's a lot of people, it's not just football, it's the academic uh, competitions, it's the music. They come to Penn to get their kids involved in something that's pretty special. Let me go back to 2000. Game number two, a 28-21 loss to Dick Dollahan's Ben Davis uh -huh. team. I want to talk about, number one, what did that loss do for your club? There's, they, there's this theory is there's no such thing as a good loss, there is, or whatever the case may be. Did the loss by Ben Davis expose some weaknesses that you had? And conversely, once you got in the tournament, uh, you were able to uh, win the state championship with a 21 to nothing win over Center Grove in the state championship. So Yeah, who also, who put Ben Davis out of the right. picture. So, so talk about the, the Ben Davis game and then of course that state championship game against a very young Eric Moore at the time. Yeah. He's a uh, he's good man, but I'll talk about him later. But uh, yeah, the Ben Davis, uh, the, I really felt like, I mean, we competed very, very well. And we had a couple drop passes that could have won the game for us. And uh, I, don't ever, I don't ever feel bad about physical errors because nobody's trying to make them. And I mean, that, that didn't really upset me, but I saw that if we played again, we were in the game and we probably could win it. And uh, I mean, you know, it's like, uh, we always talk about I've never told a team that we had to win a game. I've never said, we got to have this one. All I've ever said, all we ever did was control the controllables. So prepare as hard as you can mentally, practice as hard as you can, play as hard as you can Friday night, we'll let the chips fall where they may. And that's exactly, I mean, we didn't know, we didn't play the best down there, but we played extremely hard, and uh, we prepared well, they practiced well, played hard, we let the chips fall where they may, they didn't fall our way, but I mean, I think our kids, everybody kind of knew that, uh, you know, if we meet them again, I'm not saying it's a sure win because I, you know Ben Dickey at Ben Davis had a, a, a great run too, but I'm saying that we were we were in the game with them and uh, and uh, I think anybody that saw the game realized we could have could have won it. What not you, should have could have. What do you recall from the state championship game? Well, the. Uh, that was the first time I met Eric Moore, and I remember the first thing he jumped out talking, what a great guy he is. I mean, I, I really liked him, and uh, he was very complimentary to our program, as I was complimentary to his. So, it just goes back to what I was saying earlier. Just, I mean, I just liked him. That's the first thing. The second thing, uh, I remember... Uh, uh, Tim Adams. Yeah, yeah, Tim. I remember uh, he was talking to uh, the Ben Davis defensive coordinator. This is when the internet, his, he, the big thing on the internet, the yeah. fuck, gridiron guy. Yeah. Back when it was highly, uh, yeah. highly used by a lot yeah. of people. And he said, "I don't know how you can possibly defend Center Grove." They ran that wing T stuff. If you do this, they'll hurt you with a counter. If you come down, though, he said it's uh, almost impossible. 
and the Ben Davis guy in Reedy said, that's a, they're about impossible to defend. Well, I, t I told Tim that uh, uh, he is responsible for us getting the shutout because <laughs> we made copies of that and said nobody can defend these guys except us. And we shut them out and uh, it was, uh, it, uh, the, the first quarter it was probably statistically dead even. Then we jumped out to a 21-0 lead at halftime and uh, quite honestly I we kind of just put it on cruise control and uh, there's times we were down inside the 10 and just milked the clock and ran, didn't kick a field goal and uh, knowing that if we got stopped we'd give, they'd give them 90 yards to go. So uh, it was, uh, it was, uh, I remember that, you know, anytime you play a team that's the Mick champion, you're going to have your hands full. and. Uh, I would just really, I, we really played well, and that was probably uh, one of the most, and for whatever reason, one of the most satisfying games I ever coached, because we stayed overnight down there, and uh, the athletic director had a big room for us, but I had my sons, Tim was at one table with all his buddies, Matt was at a table, coaches were there, all players from past years came in and we talked. It was just just really a satisfying night because at that time uh, the Mick had started getting a reputation. So every one of our state championships, 95 on, we either beat the Mick champ or beat the team that beat the Mick champ. So uh, uh, Penn was right, right there with it. I mean, if you mentioned the Mick, you had to mention Penn also. You mentioned the defensive effort. Uh, Chris Skirchek, Chris Shelley, Gabe Kovach, and Jeff Thompson all made Northern Indiana Conference. Of course, Jeff had a great college career. And then, of course, you mentioned uh, Eric Moore, who was also an all-league performer. And your kicker, Matt Nagy, was an all-league performer yeah. as well. So you had six all-league performers there. Any thoughts on those boys? I, one uh, uh, funny story about uh, uh, Matt Nagy at half. <laughs> we uh, we had twenty one nothing. Things were going our way, and any time I learned my lesson, which I talked to you about in ninety eight, that uh, any time there was any kind of wind or anything, we I almost got there early enough that our kickers could kick both ways, both hashes, and, and I'd let them tell me where they wanted the ball spotted if it couldn't be right in the middle. And uh, I had a coach go with them to find out what their range was. And uh, then we'd do the same thing at halftime. I'd let them go out after coming in, just talking briefly to the team. I'd say, if, they, if we didn't need it, go back out and again see if anything's changed. Well. <laughs> We're in the locker room, Matt says, I'm gonna go out and I just wanna check some things in that field. And I said, okay, because he always did. I'm just thinking. There's no way. Was it maybe a one mile per hour wind <laughs> from the air conditioner? But he went out and uh, people told me later, he said he was putting on the show, kicking 50 yard field goals. He'd go from one half edge kicking off 50 and people were all applauding and just getting fired up. So. Uh, yeah, he was uh, he was he was a good kicker. We've been we were blessed with good kickers and uh, all uh, all those kids. A number of them uh, just you know didn't really start till their senior year. And uh, I just about a year ago just uh, went Danny Jeans went to his wedding and everything. It's it's neat that you still see and I see uh, Jeff of course he's volunteering over at Penn. So it's just it's just kind of neat to see those guys and. Uh, Boy, that, that was a group that just got better and better and better. And the thing that, that impressed me about this group is uh, we had some th we had some teams that people thought might be better than us that year. And at the spring meeting, I just said, hey, when I came to the, I came to the district two coaches meeting, people were talking. I said, this is the first time in about four or five years that Penn, is not everybody's automatic choice to win the league. People, and I, and I said, you know, we've had some people haven't done this, they hadn't done that, I've been disappointed in some things like this. And I said, there's a, we're, 
we may not even be the best team in the league. We might not even be the best team, Mr. Walker. And uh, after the meeting, I've had, I've talked to kids like that before and they'd salt, and pout, put their head down. I had about four or five kids waiting for me, senior leaders, when I walked out the door. So we talked to you for a minute. And I said, yeah. He said, uh, what you said was true, but we want to be undefeated and I see champs again. Tell us right now what you want us to do this summer. And I mean, it was like they, they were a different group after that meeting and those kids and the, we had kids that were kind of pain in the rear ends, junior year, sophomore year, that turned into being great, great, great leaders for us that, uh, that year. And uh, I remember jo Josh Young, a tight end, uh, ended up being a, uh, a tremendous leader. And he also had the, one of the great stories. We played Laporte and uh, we got the ball back with about 30 seconds to go. And Eric Moore hit him on a long pass right down the middle. And he got it down to like the 12 yard line. There's like 16 seconds left. We had no timeouts. So we're yelling to Eric, we said, spike it, spike it. And Josh is sitting there holding the ball. Yeah, spike it, spike it. He takes it and hauls off and spikes the ball, bounces the ball. Flags come out and everything. The official come over, he's laughing. He, I said, you didn't have to say that, I saw it. <laughs> but I mean, that's just, you, know, you just remember the other things like that, it's just kind of. Okay, uh, that'll be a conclusion of 2000. All right, 19.